Hey everyone, it's Pierre here. Today I'm going to show you why I'm so impressed with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D and why it's such a gem for gamers, uh, especially Tarkov players. So uh, the 5800X3D is the new king of gaming CPUs. Um, the previous crown holder, Intel's 12900KS, uh, hits higher clock speeds and has more cores than the X3D. Uh, so I was really curious to understand how the X3D is able to outperform the competition uh, with lower clocks and less cores. Because uh, I mean, usually these are the metrics we look at when considering gaming chip performance. Um, so the 53, the 5800 X3D has a 3D stacked L3 cache, uh, tripling the memory available from 32 megabytes in the original 5800X to 96 megabytes in the X3D. Um, in order to understand the impact of this, I had to learn a little more about how the CPU, cache, and RAM interact in the system. Um, so here's a basic explanation of the relationship between the three components. As you can see in the chart here, the CPU is at the top, and that's what completes the operations and requests the data from the different types of memory. As you go down the chart, um, you'll see that the latency of the memory increases along with the size. Um, and if if going from the bottom up, you'll see that the bandwidth increases and physical proximity to the chip um, on the board itself uh, increases. So basically, you know, the cache L1 is smallest but fastest. As you go down the list, they get larger, but they get slower, um, to put it in basic terms. Okay. All right, and to take that one step further, there are three types of caches as well. L1, L2, and L3. Uh, they follow the same kind of pattern where L1 is the closest, smallest, and fastest. L2 is a little further, a little larger, and a little slower. And L3, same thing, a little larger, a little slower, um, and a little further from the chip um, in physical proximity. Um, these are still faster than RAM, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, a typical operation would look like this. Step one, the CPU requests data. Step two, the cache returns the data if it's available in storage and this makes the process pretty quick. If it doesn't have the data, it needs to request the data from the RAM. In step three, the RAM copies the data to the cache. Step four, the data is sent to the CPU. Okay. I've been running EFT benchmarks on flagship hardware for a while and up until the 5800X3D, EFT was always CPU limited. So the best way to increase performance was by increasing clock speed, uh, the CPU clock speed and or decreasing the RAM latency. Uh, upgrading the GPU wasn't really as effective uh, as doing those two things for increasing EFT performance. Um, even the 12900K at 5.2 gigahertz on DDR5 was still limited in uh, was still CPU limited in EFT. Up to 1440p high performance was about equal using a 3070 Ti versus a 3090. Like the performance would look almost identical. Um, after running benchmarks with the 5800X3D though, I finally saw the bottleneck move to the GPU uh, for the first time uh, in EFT. Even at 1440p low, the differences can now be seen between the different GPU levels. Um, and uh, this was pretty surprising to see because I'd never seen the bottleneck uh, move to the GPU in EFT. Uh, I initially ran my X3D with uh, DDR4 3933 at CL14, um, 32 gigabytes. <clears throat> I was using Oloid Blade. RGB sticks rated at 4000 CL14. Um, I did this to maximize performance, um, but now I'm just curious to see how effective the 3D V cache is. So, my hypothesis was that the large L3 cache should kind of make up the difference for slower RAM. Um, so, to test this, I ran a radon interchange with the RAM set at different speeds. Um, and you can see them below. Uh, 3933 at CL14, uh, 3200 at uh, 3200 CL16, which is um, you know very easy to find sticks at this speed, rated at this speed at an affordable price, and then at 2667 CL20, which is like 
bottom of the barrel, you can find, you know, super cheap. Um, I was both amazed and dumbfounded by what I found. Uh, it was pretty incredible. Uh, take a look for yourself and see the results. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And um, thanks for watching. Alright, so as you can see, the performance is pretty much identical across the different RAM speeds. Usually in EFT, you'll see your RAM speed make a noticeable difference with the 5800X3D though. 
The 3D V cache is so good that it essentially negates the need for fast RAM. Uh, that means you can save a few hundred dollars on RAM to put towards a different component or to just save outright. So I'm thinking about comparing this to a 12900 KS system. A KS costs about 750 to 800. Let's say you throw in 300 for a motherboard and then maybe another three to 400 for DDR5 RAM. You're already sitting at maybe 13, 1400 dollars just for the CPU, mobile, and RAM. If you go with the 5800X3D, you can get the X3D for around 500, I believe. Uh, and then, you know, a B550 or an X570. Um, probably find around for 200 bucks and then you could throw in like 3200 CL16 32 gigabytes of it you can get for like 110 bucks right now so you would essentially be getting a better performing machine for maybe half the price so I think it's pretty incredible what AMD is doing with the X3D so I just wanted to share my findings after completing these tests um, normally when you're dealing with top level hardware, you're sacrificing value for performance, right? Um, with the X3D, you're getting the top performance and you're getting value out of it. So I think it's a no brainer if you're looking to upgrade right now and your main use is gaming. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And um, as always, thanks for watching.